here's a close-up I just shot of this oh, outrageous Reese's peanut butter poke cake. Look at that. I can't wait to dig into it tomorrow. Oh boy. You've got to make this one if you like peanut butter and chocolate fudge. Oh yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Hi everyone. Welcome to my channel. For those of you that are new here, my name is Dolores, better known as the Baking Diva. And for my regular subscribers, thank you so much for coming back. Uh, it means a lot to me and I really appreciate your support. Well, you know I was away for a hot minute. I had some surgery and I did just put on a Mother's Day video. But I'm healing well and I'm back and I'm ready to get started with my new series. I just finished my Best of the Bunt series where I did 13 of my favorite Bunt cakes. There were many more I could have done, but I wanted to get on to other things. But today is episode one of my new series, The Perfect Pokes. That's right, the perfect pokes. Now, do you know what a poke cake is? Well, a poke cake is a cake that after it's baked, you poke lots of holes into the top of the cake. I'm gonna show you right here so you'll see what I mean. The pokes in the cake have a purpose. And after you poke them, you're going to spread on the top either a creamy or a gelatin type or maybe more of a liquid type topping which will seep into all those holes and make lusciousness. So you say, well, who came up with these poke cakes? They were very popular in the 1970s. Mm -hmm. The 1970s, it seemed like everybody was promoting like gelatinous uh, desserts, um, pudding type desserts, and there was the birth of the poke cake. So I'm gonna do my series and I think you're gonna be blown away. They're easy to make. They're all done, you'll see, in a nine by 13 pan. And there's so many different varieties, but I'm gonna make for you today to start off episode one one of my favorites, my Reese's Peanut Butter Poke Cake, and oh, is it yummy. So what do you say we get started? Let's get started. And of course, I'm playing with my green screen in the back. What do you think of that? Mm -hmm, I love it. And I'm trying to get good at it. So I hope each time I do it, I get a little bit better. It's just fun. So, all right, first thing we're gonna do for this Reese's Peanut Butter Poke Cake, we're gonna preheat our oven to 350 degrees. You're gonna need an electric mixer. It can be a hand mixer or a stand mixer. I'm gonna use my stand mixer today. Okay, now we're gonna start this off super easy. You are gonna need nine by 13 baking pan, any kind of, 9 by 13 pan you want and I have sprayed it with I like that um, either Baker's Joy or the Pam uh, quick release spray that also contains flour so I've already done that for you let me put that down here now we're gonna start this one off with a boxed chocolate cake mix you can use any brand you want just needs to be chocolate and I'm gonna bring over ooh, my mixer here, put my beater on it. Here we go. I'm gonna put my cake mix in the bowl. Now, not all of the poke cakes start with a box cake mix, but a lot of them do, and it makes it so easy. So to start off, we're just gonna follow the recipe on the back of the box. We're going to put in here one cup of water, just as if you're making this cake, which you are making. So I'm putting in here one cup of water, move this over here, half a cup of vegetable oil, and three large eggs. I'm gonna raise the bowl and I'm gonna mix this. 
And then once I get this mixed, I'm following the directions right on the box. I'm gonna mix it till it's all combined, usually about two minutes. And then I'm gonna pour this batter into the nine by 13 pan and I'm gonna bake it in the oven, according to the box instructions, for 34 to 38 minutes. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna get this whipped up. I'm gonna put it in the pan. I'm gonna pop it in the oven. And when it's done baking, I'm gonna bring it out and then the magic will begin. So don't go away. Okay, I'm back. I took the cake out of the oven and it's still warm. I took it out maybe about five minutes ago. So what you want to do is, and this is the secret to a poked cake, you want to take the back of a wooden spoon, or in this case I happen to have a spatula with a wooden handle. You can see the diameter of it here. You want to take, now don't use a fork. Some people say, oh I used a fork. No, the fork does not make the holes big enough. And the idea of this is, you'll see, we're going to put something on top of this after we poke the holes and it's going to seep into the cake. Mmm, that's the fun part of the poke cake. So you don't want to wait until this is cold because if the cake gets cold, the top of it gets crusty and it just doesn't work well putting the poking, poke, poke, poking holes in it. So you want to wait till maybe it's out of the oven, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take the end of your wooden spoon, in this case my wooden spatula, and you're going to start poking holes, a lot of holes. I like to do them in a row. I'll do, you know, I'll space them apart, not too far apart. I don't know, 10, 12 in a row, and then you'll go to the next row and the next row. Let me start right now. I'm going to poke one right in here. Just push it all the way down and see this is not cold so these pokes are coming out beautiful. I'm going to go next to it and poke another one. You don't want to make them too far apart and push it all the way down. You want to get it all the way down and here's another one and I'm going to keep doing this till I get the pokes. Let me do a row and then I'll try to hold it up for you um, all into the cake. Let me go here and I'll do one more row and then I'll do the rest off camera. It's hot. Can you see how I'm making these pokes? So let me finish putting my, poking my holes in the cake and then I'll be back to show you the next step. Don't go away, this is a beauty. Okay, I'm holding it up, hopefully you can see it. I finished poking all my uh, holes in the cake. I made about one, two, three, four, five, seven rows. And I have about, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, maybe about six holes in each row. But it doesn't have to be precise. So now, what I'm going to do is I have a jar. This is like a 11 and 3 quarter ounce jar of hot fudge topping. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take half, about 3 quarters of this jar. I'll put the recipe down below for you. I'm going to put it in a little microwave dish. And I'm going to microwave this in the microwave just for a short time until it gets uh, nice and smooth. And I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. What I did is I microwaved my hot fudge until it got nice and liquidy and smooth like that. My bird is chirping in the background. You'll have to forgive her. <laughs> She's happy. All right, now I'm going to start to pour this over the cake because you want to get the holes filled up right and the rest of the hot fudge i'm saving for when i just drizzle it over the top later this is a little too hot for me to hold let me see so i'm going to start slowly if you can see drizzling this pretty much over the top you want to try to get the fudge in those holes because that's the idea of all this. Mmm. Okay, so you sprinkle this on the top. All this luscious hot fudge. Ooh, did you ever have a hot fudge sundae with peanut butter? Oh, so good. So we're getting all that in. Try to get it into the holes. Mmm, looking good. 
scrape it in there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, Dolores, get it in those holes. Come on. <laughs> Don't want to waste any. Nope. Okay. All righty. Just do the best you can. Okay. All righty. All right. They're not going to be filled up, obviously, because they're deep holes, but you want to get at least some of the fudge in all of them. All right. Just play with it a little bit. And uh, you can take, let me see, I'll take my spatula over here. And if you have some that's um, on the cake, just try to work its way into those holes. All right, because this is what a poke cake is all about. Yummy. All right, so after you get that done, you pour your fudge over the top of the cake. There's my phone. Let me finish this and I'll be right back. Okay, so what you want to do is spread that hot fudge over the top of the cake and then you want it to seep into the holes. So we're going to put that aside. Um, after I mixed my cake, I had learned to multitask. I rinsed out my bowl, so I'm reusing it now, my bowl and my beater. And I'm having tacos tonight, so while the cake was baking, I uh, fried my meat for my tacos. So. Busy, 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 multitasking. That's what I teach the kids. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is take eight ounces of softened cream cheese. Let me put that in my mixing bowl. And I'm going to put a can. Now this is a 14 ounce can of condensed milk in with the cream cheese. And I'm gonna mix them both together with my beater. Mmm, I gotta tell you, this cake is awesome. If you like peanut butter, if you like fudge, you like chocolate, ooh, you like peanut butter cups, Reese's peanut butter cups, you're gonna love this cake. All right, so now I'm going to mix these two together. Okay. I mix that until it was smooth. Now to that, I'm going to add one cup of creamy peanut butter. So let me get that in there. Any brand you like. My favorite is Jif, but it doesn't matter. Whatever you prefer and whatever is your favorite. So let me get that in. This is not hard to do. I mean, think about it. You're starting out with a box cake, baking it, and then you're just making, you know, you're putting your hot fudge in the little holes. And then you'll see, we're going to top it with this. Okay, got my peanut butter in there. Have my peanut butter in there. Now I'm going to mix that. Whoa, does that smell good if you like peanut butter? If you don't like peanut butter, you won't like this recipe. Oh, God. Let's see what this looks like. of Cool Whip. Of course, my store was out of the 12 ounce containers. They only had eight. <laughs> so we had to buy two of them. Ay, ay, ay. So we're going to add half of our Cool Whip into this peanut butter mixture. So if it called for 12 ounces of Cool Whip, we're going to, we're going to add six ounces of Cool Whip in here. So it's probably going to be not quite, but almost all of this uh, Cool Whip topping. So I'm going to add that to my peanut butter mixture. Oh my gosh. Ooh. Now, hopefully you're still with me because I want to give you a tip. These poke cakes are best made the day before you're going to eat them because they're refrigerated and all of that lusciousness that's in the holes that you poked, it all kind of melds into the cake and it's delicious. Now, if that's not possible for you, you can 
Make it about four hours before you're going to use it and keep it in the refrigerator. It just comes out much better like that, okay? So that's a little tip. So let me put this back on. Oh my goodness, it's so good. Okay, oh, the smell, the smell, the smell. Woo. Okay, that's mixed and it looks perfect. So let me take this beater off. And those of you that follow me, you say, is that crazy, Diva? Lick the beater. What do you think? Of course I do. I've done it since I was a little girl and I'm not about to change now. And I'm still alive. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, you'll have to excuse me. I'll be back later after I lick this whole thing. No, not really. Oh my God. Oh, is that good? Oh. I could just eat that right out of there. All right, now I'm gonna bring over my cake and I'm going to spoon this peanut butter mixture all over the top of it. Just use your spatula, that all over the top. I'm gonna spread it all over the top of the cake. Now after I get the top of this covered with this, oh, this divine, peanut butter mixture. I'm going to put this cake in the refrigerator. Whoopsie. Whoopsie, Dolores, don't make a mess. <laughs> oh boy. Now, there are many different kind of poke cakes you can make. I have selected for my series my favorites, and that's what I'm gonna be making for you. Oh boy, this, is, this is looks heavenly. Look at this. I mean, really, I could just leave a little bit in this bowl and put it in a dish and, oh my goodness, have a little bit of peanut butter pudding. So take your spatula and just spread it on the top. Oh boy, look at this masterpiece. Oh, diva. Mm, look at this. Ay, ay, ay. Can you see this? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Should I lick the spatula? Yes. <laughs> um, mm, so good. Okay, so I'm gonna put plastic wrap over this. I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator, let it chill. And then when I take it out, I'll show you what we put on the top to finish it off. And oh, it's going to be heavenly. So don't forget, come back. Okay, after I put the peanut butter topping on, I put this in the refrigerator for maybe an hour or so. So to finish this baby off, I'm gonna take what was left of my Cool Whip and I'm going to put it on the top of the peanut butter. So we're gonna put that on and spread it. Okay, so I'm putting the Cool Whip that I had left over on top of the peanut butter, spreading it gently with a spatula. Oh yeah, okay. Let me get that all covered. This cake is to die for, you will love it. And remember, this is only episode one. Look at that. Okay, now, looks good to me. I'm gonna take my hot fudge that I had left, and um, you saw the bottle I was using, and I melted it in the microwave. Um, keep your eye on it. You can melt it for 30, 40 seconds. Melt it until it gets liquefied. Now, you can pour it right out of there. You can use a spoon. I happen to have this little bottle, so I put the melted hot fudge in here. I'm gonna drizzle this over the top of the Cool Whip. So let's go, here we go. Oh yeah, look at that, woo-hoo. Isn't that good looking? Yes siree. Oh yeah, what do you think I'm gonna put on top of this? Oh, look at that. Oh yeah, see how nice it comes out when you melt it? Oh yeah. 
Okay. Should I go the other way? I think I might. Why not, right? The more the merrier. All right, there we go. Ooh, look at that. That looks so yummy. I'm gonna put some chopped up peanut butter cups. I took some of my minis, chopped them up in a bag, and I'm just gonna place them here and there, randomly, on top of this. Oh, look at that. So delicious. Now, as I mentioned earlier, these poke cakes taste the best if you make them the day before and you keep them in the refrigerator overnight because all that lusciousness in there will just sort of like seep into the cake and everything. It tastes so much better. Um, if you can't do that, you can make it in the morning and then put it in your refrigerator and have it for dessert at night. But honestly, I like to keep these poke cakes in the refrigerator about eight hours before I uh, slice them and eat them. Oh, this is gonna be delicious, delicious. Oh, I have lots of people in my family that like peanut butter, so they're gonna be happy with this one. Oh yeah, look at that. I think I chopped up about I don't know, eight or ten of these little peanut butter cups. Look, I think that's perfection. So I hope you enjoyed episode one of my new series, The Perfect Pokes. And you won't believe what I have coming for you on my episode two. You will love it. Let me hold this up a little bit so you can see it. Look at that.